Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Timothy Toju. I'm excited to be here with you again today. Um, it's our second episode of 2024. And, you know, based on what we had last week here with the freezing weather, the weather's getting a lot better here in good old Saskatchewan. Uh, today, I have an entrepreneur that's joining us. Her name is Diane Dupuy. She's in the financial industry and has rep rapidly expanded her brokerage across the country. Uh, through this, she's also helping people change mindsets, crush goals, and believing in herself. So if you follow her online, you'll notice that she's high energy, always bringing pos positivity to her followers. She's a licensed financial broker. She's also a timeline therapy and transformation transformation specialist. But you know what? I am not going to tell you everything that she does. She's going to tell you herself because I can't do it justice. But hey, I want to welcome you today, Dan. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. So Absolutely. right in Edmonton, is that right? Today I'm in Edmonton, yes. Oh, that's good. And you go between here and Edmonton, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. Well, that's great. Hey, tell us about your journey, how you are, where you are, what brought you to the career path that you're in and into the entrepreneurship space. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, well, it started as a little girl, quite honestly, when my friends wanted to play house, <laughs> I wanted to play business. Yeah. And so I'd play with them for a little while and they'd say, okay, what are we going to do for a business? And I would start up little ideas. And I remember drawing pictures and selling them and, and coming up with all kinds of different business ideas. I think I was just born into it. My parents were entrepreneurs. I actually grew up in a in a grocery store. Basically, our, our home was connected to the store. And so it's really all that I knew. And so for me, working in a job always felt really constrictive and, um, you know, really couldn't be my true self. But I knew I had to do that for a little while to learn and grow some things. And so I actually got started out in the food and beverage, that was my life for a long, long time. And to be quite honest, all I thought I was smart enough for. <laughs> when I came out of high school, I really wanted to study kinesiology. I had a mind for fitness, but I didn't think I was smart enough, didn't think I was good enough. And so I've kind of followed the steps of, of my family and, and went into the food and beverage. And, and I did really well there, but I worked jobs and worked my way up in the restaurants. I was managing very, very young, and uh, it only made sense to own my own restaurant. Yeah, for and, sure. Right. And so that was my dream. My dream was to own a restaurant my whole life. And then I took the leap of faith one time an opportunity came up and I was living in a little town of Prono just outside of Regina yeah. and they had just built a brand new rink facility and they were looking for somebody to cook on their curly nights and uh, they were charging rent but it was almost nothing and so I approached them and said hey could could I open up a cafe in here and, and do takeout and catering and out of this kitchen they said yeah for sure and so my babies were one and three and wow. I decided what a great idea to open up a restaurant. I wanted to, to not have them in daycare. So I thought, well, I could be with the kids during the day and then work at night. And my restaurant was only open five nights a week. And it, it was going to be a dream. And it was complete chaos oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for like three years. My poor kids, I mean, they knew how to wash potatoes and, and help out in the kitchen when they were three, four years old. I remember trips to Costco and Wholesale Club. These poor kids just it was, it was a real adventure. <laughs> and so then I kind of outgrew that space and ended up buying an actual, I bought a hotel. I, I bought the hotel in Pence and that mm -hmm. was, that was the dream. I thought I was going to live the dream, but quickly turned into, um, well, I just bought myself a horrible job that I can never leave. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and so, yeah and like so many entrepreneurs do right dumped a bunch of money into it with this big dream and this big belief and and really had no help and no support and it went okay um but I kind of fell into the lifestyle to be honest of, of a bar owner mm -hmm. and you know what goes with that late nights and partying and my priorities got upside down and within two years it actually got to the point where as if we don't sell this place we're gonna die mm. <clears throat> and so that was really where life changed for me and I, I really woke up and and 
it is a miracle that I'm still here. And I think that is because of my huge purpose. And so from there, thankfully we sold it, but in that process lost everything. <laughs> I had nothing like a hundred dollars. But you put everything into it. That's it. Put everything into it. I had put my house on the line to purchase the place. My house sold for tens and thousands of dollars way less than it was appraised for. So I, I just lost money all over in circles. And um, literally there was a day it was, uh, it would have been in about 2019, no, 2020. I, I was sitting there and I literally had a hundred dollars to my name. I didn't have any credit cards. I had nothing to fall back on. My kids were starting school and I couldn't even buy them a new outfit because I had to make sure I had food for their lunches. Wow. Yeah. And I I prayed. I, I asked for an opportunity. And the next day, day or two later, I actually had a friend reach out and introduce me into a direct sales company. It was Activewear. And I, I, like, I'm like, I can't afford it. I only have $100. She said, I'll take $100. I'll help you get started with a hundred dollars. And so I did, I spent my last hundred dollars and I started building that business. And through that, I learned confidence and that I do love entrepreneurship so much and, and growing my own business, but that particular one wasn't going to get me right. There's a, there's a great place for, for direct sales businesses. They definitely help to supplement income, but it wasn't going to change my life. Mm -hmm. And so I, my options were open and I was just, asking the universe send me what I'm supposed to be doing next send it to me and I just was open and I listened and I I really did just fall into the financial industry to be honest with you I met someone on Facebook wow uh, yeah yeah actually it started on TikTok I met a gentleman on TikTok his name was Adam Daw and he was a motivational speaker in Ottawa so I wanted to get to know him a little bit more because I, I want to speak more and learn from him so I went to go to Facebook to find him that Adam Daw did not have a Facebook account, but I found a different Adam Daw. Okay. <laughs> and I looked at his profile and I didn't know what he did in his life, but I loved the way it looked. Like this guy looks happy. looks like he's making a difference in the world. He's traveling, living his best life. I don't care what business he does. And I could tell he's clearly recruiting. I'm going to call him and see what he's up to. I'm going to do whatever he's doing. And I, I decided before I even had a clue <laughs> what he was doing. Wait, so you're telling me you you found the guy on TikTok and they found a different guy with the same name on Facebook and yeah. they decide to reach out. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where it gets really good. And so we got onto a meeting and he showed me the business and the opportunity. And the first thing I was thinking of was like, no, I don't want to work in the financial industry. That's not my identity. I don't know anything about that. But here's what's really interesting is that I actually started doing business with this company only a month before I had just moved over um, uh, my insurance with this company and had a really great experience. And I was out there sharing with my friends. You have to you have to check the, this person out. They're going to help you. Um, but somehow didn't know there was a business opportunity coming out of that until I met Adam. And so I was thinking, okay, universe, you're, you're so funny, right? I didn't get it the first time. So I needed it the second time. And um, yeah, I just kind of, he said, I'll help you change your life. If you do what I tell you to do and follow my coaching. And he did, it's been two years later. I mean, I'm making the most money I've ever made in my entire life. I'm free. I travel. I'm happy. I help people make a difference literally um went from a hundred bucks in my bank account and a couple of years later to just not having to worry anymore it's incredible that's incredible you know this kind of reminds me of a podcast we did in 2021 and our guest said something that still stuck with me she says sometimes things go wrong for life to go right because you literally put your heart and soul you went from owning a restaurant a whole no hotel to a hundred dollars left most people will have given up, right? Most people will have said, hey, let's just go get a nine to five job. Hey, let's just go do this, yeah. right? And, you know, something in you was saying, no, don't give up, right? You got to get back up and you got to get going. And you did. Yeah, yeah. For that. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Absolutely. I did get a job in between, to be honest, I had to. And it was a great job in the food and beverage industry. 
probably was the best job out there that you could get I had a great pay and benefits and, and pension it was all it was all good but then I also had a boss yes <laughs> and I, I didn't I didn't love that and um when I quit that job probably was one of my scarier moments I I, I, I literally I asked the universe I have some angel cards I lay them out should I quit my job today <laughs> and the cards came up one said when you walk away new doors will open and the other one said the time is now and I literally instantly picked up my phone and it was shaking like this and I called my boss and I said I'm gonna quit now <laughs> wow. just like that wow. As, <laughs> you know yeah. what like, but you're listening to the universe and and it's guided you well so far that's right? it we're so, so supported oh, yeah like in the financial world now what are you doing in the financial world oh I love, you know what? I just love pe helping people get started in a business. So I'm basically, I'm doing for people what, what Adam did for me. And I'm, I'm helping them get started in business, training, learning the business, how they can build their own and, and get out there and help people. We're, we're helping people with investments, insurances, saving money, making a bunch more money, educating, right? Because we don't get taught financial concepts and strategies in school. Nope, no, at all. Delivery so, is back in for sure. That's it. Yeah. So truly helping people create their best life in all aspects because our business really is a lifestyle. It's it's just a way to set yourself free. It's just so good. Well, that's awesome. And uh, you mentioned that you've expanded now across Canada. Yeah. How and, and that would have been in the last two years that you started, right? Two to three years. So how yeah. do you? from starting two to three years ago to expanding two to three years later. Because yeah. a lot of people, they may not really understand how you could grow that quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, I've, I've been in business now two years. I'm a senior partner with our firm, uh, w which is fairly quick. And I would attribute that to excellent mentorship. So finding an incredible mentor, my mentors are a million dollar a year income earners speak to them every single day. And I, and I just do what they told me to do. <laughs> Find somebody who's doing what you want to be doing and has the things that you want and then go replicate that. Oh, <clears throat> right. That's basically what I did. And uh, obviously you've seen my social media building on there. It's a free place to meet people. Right. And through, I believe, just being genuine in your authentic self and letting people know that you have an opportunity that's amazing, just attracts great people. And uh, faith in believing and being clear on what it is that you want. I just decided this is what I want. See a huge business and um, just making it happen. All right. So you're saying mentorship, faith, and clarity. Yeah, those would be the definitely the top that's that's yeah. amazing and then you also when when you were sending me a little bit more about yourself you said that you were master nlp can you dive more into that what is that yeah yeah awesome so another time i was asking in the universe you know give me something i was doing a 10 kilometer run and uh that would have been about three or three years ago and i hit kilometer eight and i just hit a wall and i just completely had a breakdown like i was crying i couldn't run anymore and i said to my friend i was running with i need more in life i'm not living my purpose fully i'm meant to do more i need to reach more people help more people and uh, he said you got to meet my friend joe do you know joe alvarez i know that name i know okay. that name i don't know yeah. if I but I know that man. Oh, he is amazing. So another another amazing soul that was sent to me in my life. And he said he teaches NLP. I said, well, what is NLP? I don't know what that is. He said, it's neuro-linguistic programming. It's what Tony Robbins does. And yeah. he knows I love Tony Robbins. I've been to many Tony Robbins programs. And uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to meet Joe. And then about two hours later after my run, I was at a park and I ran into my new neighbor. I had seen her move in, but hadn't met her yet. And she had some journals on her, on her blanket and stuff. So I knew that we were going to hit it off. So I went over and introduced myself. And she said, I just finished this course in NLP with Joelle Raz. 
<laughs> I was thinking, are you kidding me? Twice in one day, I've been told to go meet Joe Alvarez. So I called him up right away, went for coffee. He explained to me that basically it's reprogramming your brain for success, changing those old stories, right? The, all that old programming that's put into our brains from everything outside of us the whole time we're growing up that limits right? Limits everything we do, all those walls we hit, the things we think we can't do. We're all implanted by somebody else. And so he trains people to become coaches to help people change their brains, right? For success. So it's literally reprogramming your brain. Wow. So is it more reprogramming <laughs> your brain to focus more on the positive around life and business opportunities instead of maybe dwelling on the negativity in the world or how does it work? Cause I don't know this program. Yeah. Awesome. Well, our subconscious runs 95% of what we do, right? We don't wake up in the morning and say, heart, I need you to beat today or blood keep pumping and keep me alive. I got to breathe. No, our subconscious runs everything. And that comes down to every single thing that we do, the self-talk, you know, our habits. And so this can help in any aspect of life. So when people are trying to make changes in their life, say you're trying to lose weight, how many times have you seen somebody go lose 50 pounds and they gain it right back? They go lose 50 pounds and gain it right back. Well, it's because their identity needs to change. If they've always been that overweight person their whole life, that's their identity. And so they're going to keep coming back because they believe they're the overweight person. So we need to get in there and change that identity, that programming. Who do I need to become? to be someone to keep that weight off. Maybe I need to be an athlete. Maybe I need to be somebody who has these certain habits, right? So we get right into the subconscious and make the changes there so that you can maintain that weight loss or grow that business, right? I had to change my identity from being a restaurant manager to a financial broker. Boy, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how many meetings I was on at first and I was trying to hide. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't call me I'm not even sure I should be here yeah. so it, it's it's really changing from the inside so you can have all the things on the outside and so I trained with Joe became a coach with him and then kind of was looking at maybe starting a coaching program but then through our business we have the ability to build our own brokerages and I thought geez here's something really cool I can help people get started in business and help them make money while they get coaching for free. Yeah. Right. And so I can help people reprogram their brains, believe in themselves, gain confidence and all of those things. And they don't have to go pay a coach a couple hundred bucks an hour. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. So then you must have a really high performing team then, right? Like if they, with, with under your leadership, your guidance, your coaching, your team must be high performing. We're, we're growing quick. And here's the thing, though, we'll give anybody a, like a great person who wants to work hard and and learn. We'll give them a chance. Yes. Right. So there's there's people starting up with with low self-belief. They're unsure. They're scared. But I'm able to help them change that thinking, grow their identity into whoever they want to be. So, yeah, for some people, they come in with a different identity and they can they can go real fast. And some people, it takes a little bit of time to to learn and grow a little bit more about themselves before they get going. But, yeah, yeah, we're growing quick. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And, exciting. you know, the more lives you can change, then the more lives they can change. And then the more life those people can change and it becomes a trickle down effect. Right. Yes, yes, we yes, all yes, need yes. we all need that little bit of a boost and we all need that positive change in life, right? Especially in the world that we live in nowadays. All right. Absolutely. So what is timeline therapy and transformational specialist? Because that's something else that you do. What is that? Yeah. So that goes along with NLP, the timeline therapy portion part of it is is really letting go of storing negative emotions in an effortless way you know counseling obviously serves a great purpose i do counseling too it's really really good for kind of like talking about things and 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 that kind of thing whereas timeline therapy we actually get into those stored negative emotions and let them go without actually having to talk about the events that created them it's working with your subconscious mind going on a little tour to the past where you felt those feelings because really the, what we remember the most is those feelings. 
And by letting go of those stored negative emotions from years, years before, we're able to control our emotions more now today. Wow, that is, that's awesome. So is that something that you now help people do and be able to control those emotions and those negative feelings, things like that? You help people through that with your brokerage? Or is that something you do as well with others? Yeah, so I do take on a few just straight up coaching clients. When I meet people that that really, I feel like really, really need me, then we'll work together. But I'm very selective, to be honest with you, who I work with, uh, because my focus is my financial brokerage, but I do help my team inside of my brokerage as well. Um, but the timeline therapy part of it is more on the, the coaching program that I would offer. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk social media for a second, because mm -hmm. I mean, on social media, uh, you, you share a lot of positive positivity to the world and all that. How do you maintain that energy? How do you maintain that positivity in a world that's full of negativity? Oh, I love this question so much. But it comes back to the identity portion that I was talking about, right? I identify myself. I am a positive, high energy person. Like the biggest compliment you could give me is I love your energy, Diane. I just feel so good. There was one day and I, I went through some dark times. I was very depressed. I was overweight. I was an alcoholic, like, like rock bottom. And I never wanted to see that again. And I decided one day I'm going to build a brand and it's going to be around positivity and being happy. And I'm going to make a commitment to being the most excited, happy person anybody runs into every single day. That's what I'm going to do. I just want to be known as that person and just share a light. And I don't really know what my brand is for, what, what's going to happen. I did feel eventually it was going to fall into a business, but I started working on that. So every day, and it made me feel good. So a lot of the things that I talk about on my social media are things that I'm struggling with. Here's what I learned. This is what I learned about today. And when I do this, it makes me feel good. So I'm going to give you the, that tool. And I just, I, I'm a little bit obsessed with human resiliency. I love stories about people. You had all, you know, the things going wrong and then have all the things happening because I believe if that person can do it, I can do it. And if I can do it, then you can do it. I'm going to show you. So you go do it. That's awesome. Right? And then just, I actually had someone at the gym say to me one time, wouldn't it be a lot easier to just be negative? Like, is it hard to be as positive as you are all the time? I say you're darn right, but somebody's got to do it because yep. it, it's a wave, right? It's a trickle effect. And you smile at one person in the morning could change their whole day. It's so simple and it feels so good. And we all have that thermostat. <laughs> Mine's like up here. <laughs> if I start to be a little less excited, I don't feel good when it dips down, right? When you're used to feeling angry all the time, if you feel happy, it's uncomfortable because that's your thermostat. You're angry. My thermostat is set at happy. So I, I got to be fired up to feel real good. <laughs> I just love it. That's awesome. So like when you went through the hard times and the dark times, how did you change your thermostat to happy? Because I mean, because uh, a lot of people are probably going through that right now, right? And there's a lot of people that would want to be happier in their life and have a more happy positive attitude but just can't get over that little humph of negativity how how mm -hmm. did you do it and what advice would you have for those people yeah yeah great question so how did I do it I mean I believe in fitness moving your body just feels good but moving your body for the purpose to feel good not to punish yourself for where you're at that was a huge thought for me because when you're starting from rock bottom and you want to get out of it, even, even an inch up feels like a mountain. So really, I would just choose the next best thought. You know, what's something good I could focus on? Gratitude is huge. And filling my brain with knowledge. Tony Robbins always says, if you're not growing, you're dying. And, and then I just started listening to little motivational YouTube videos just enough to make me feel good. And then I got thirstier, right? And I started reading more books and then taking courses and then just kind of keep growing. If you're growing, you're going to feel good. So look at, like, take the baby steps. Don't look at, you know, so far off. Don't compare yourself to anybody else either because you're on your own journey. 
and then just choose the next best thought. I got myself into a little busy yesterday. Why am I so angry? Let's let's get out of this diet. What can I focus on that's really good? Because no matter what you focus on, you're going to get more of, right? Yeah. So just choose the next best thought. And then yeah. the next best thought. And then the next best thought. And then practice it daily and give yourself a break. It's not going to change overnight. And hopefully there's somebody that you can talk to. I'm very grateful. I had an aunt who was willing to listen to me cry in the car over and over and over. There's a there's a Jim Rohn quote. And it's because I used to say it, why is this so hard? Why is it got to be so hard? And he says something along the lines of instead of wishing it were easier, wish that you were better, right? Become better. And that one really stuck with me. And it's just about personal growth. Wow, that's amazing. You know, personal growth is always something that is super important to me. I'm always taking classes to be better, to get better, right? Like when you ask my kids, they all be like, oh, dad's always taking the class, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, and that's just, but that's how I grew up. My parents are also big into personal growth and also always learning and getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, the one, the one quote that, that I saw last week that really stuck to me, and you kind of alluded to that today, was, was uh, learn to be better at what you're already good on. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times people say work on your on your weaknesses mm -hmm. right but this quote was saying in 2024 work on your strength yeah. right? so oh. keep on getting better keep on getting better because yeah. we're never perfect we're not perfect mm -hmm. right we always have to strive to be that better version of herself yeah i think it was, I think it was uh, around december or november last year uh one of my favorite actors uh, matthew mcconaughey mm -hmm. uh, an online masterclass se session yep. right? and uh in in there one of the questions was because you were talking about mentors and stuff like that and he had great mentors and then somebody had asked him who is your hero and he paused for a second and he said you know ever since I was a little kid I always look 10 years ahead to who I want to be mm -hmm. so when I was 25 my hero is the 35 year yes. old version of myself. Mm -hmm. When I was 35, my hero is the 45 year old version of myself mm -hmm. because I want to always get better and always be a better version of who I am. Mm -hmm. Right. So when, when you were talking about, you know, try to find the next positive thought and the next positive, positive thought in order to shift your mindset, that's kind of where that took me. Yeah. Right. Uh, try to always find that better version of yourself right to to be better yeah absolutely everybody has a gift right so why not focus on your gift and make that stronger and better so that you can offer it to the world than worrying about what you're not good at right we all have weaknesses that we're not great at do the things you're awesome at oh for sure yeah for sure. so you're a mother of two yeah right yeah and you know as uh, you are raising your son and your daughter uh how do you instill this mindset in them so that you know mm. generation because again we live in a world that's filled with a lot of negative stuff on social media right mm. like when you look on the news or anything like that the things that get the clicks are the negative stuff yeah. but how do we empower the future generation to have that positive mindset to have that growth mindset and not mm. fall into trap of negativity oh I love this because to be honest with you so I do have two children my son lives with his dad and uh, um actually I haven't seen him in two years just about a little over two years and he kind of fell into the negative side of things so so my son tends to focus on the negative uh, whereas my daughter she she sees the positives and so he's kind of gravitated towards his dad and now believes that's kind of the best place to be whereas my daughter sees what I'm doing and, and she's growing and so leading by example number one right would be the way to teach our kids and just 
that would that would be it you just you got to keep believing even if they don't believe in you because currently if you if you ever met my son he would probably say I hate my mom um you know because of what he's he's been taught and I do have full faith that eventually he'll see the truth and it's a lot of what really drives me in what I do because if he sees mom making a difference in the world you know being positive all the time eventually it's it's gonna click right and so thankfully my daughter, she picks it up. She, she's very positive, very caring. She loves to help people. And, um, yeah. And then I think you can, you just got to keep being a light because it's contagious, contagious, positivity is contagious. And so is negativity. And so just, you know, not letting those tough things get you. She's the best thought. Be grateful. So no, that's, that's great. So for us as parents, Part of what we keep do is just lead by that example, right? Um, I mean, it's the same in leadership, right? Well, my last podcast, we were talking about leadership and talking about kind leadership and how that is contagious, right? If you're a kind leader and you lead by example and people see that you're genuinely just a kind person, they will want to go above and beyond for you. And that is also contagious to them. And when they come to work, they're happy. When they go home from work, they remain happy, that but then, right? So just leading by example and also, you know, teaching them to be positives and maybe yeah. just help them through the corrective measures of Absolutely. Uh, from negativity to positivity. I, yeah. I truly appreciate everything that you've shared with us today. Now, I always ask all my guests this, if this your top five tips for anyone struggling to get into that entrepreneurship space or struggling to get their mindset to understand that, hey, I can do it, right? To take that leap of faith. What would you say is your top five tips that you that you can share with our audience? Oh, I love this. Number one, <laughs> you can do it. I'm just gonna tell you that. Okay, maybe that's not number one, but look at how many people have done it they're not any different than you everybody was scared i think that's the most important thing to know it's just the difference of who's going to take the chance and who's not everyone's afraid they they think they're not good enough uh so many people suffer with that imposter syndrome right that's not me everybody does they all feel it <laughs> number two you won't know unless you try and what's the worst that can happen that'd be the question i would always ask What's the worst thing going to happen? Am I going to die? Oh, die. <laughs> you might end up with a hundred bucks in your account at some point, but mm -hmm. it won't last forever, right? What is the worst thing that could happen? And um, what's his name? Oh, he talks about, you know, being on your deathbed. And you're when you're laying on your deathbed, are you going to say, geez, I wish I didn't buy that restaurant? No, you're going to be so glad you did. And so what kind of regrets are you going to be leaving behind if you don't take that chance on yourself? I don't know how many I'm in. So if four, four people want to believe in themselves, um, find a coach. I think that's so important. Work with somebody who can help you believe in yourself and uh, get started on that personal development trail. And that's going to be a game changer. And just go do it. Just go do it. <laughs> do it. Yeah. There's no failure. Only stepping stones to success. That's it. It's all just learning and growing. Yeah. And I mean, through, through those times where you feel that you failed, there's so much lessons that you learn as well that will propel you to the other realm of success, right? So yeah. you know, like I always say, it's not failure, it's lessons learned. That's right. And then you're like, good thing that happened where yeah. I wouldn't know this today. Exactly. And as Kobe Bryant says, you you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Right. How about that? So, Ooh, I just read the book Winning yes. with Tim Grover. So good. And, so it's, good. and it's probably a right around that same message as well, right? So yeah. Yeah. go out and just Absolutely. do it and, and find someone that could be your mentor. Yeah. so that it can also guide you along the way that's amazing yeah that's absolutely amazing you know your journey is so interesting uh because you've you've had a lot of lows along the way but you refuse to give up and you use the lessons learned to get you to where you are today 
And I think your journey could be a testament to a lot of people and a lot of people that maybe wants to get into that entrepreneurship space. So if there's people out there that want to follow you and kind of follow your journey and get a little bit of that positivity that you that you're sharing with the world, how can they find you? Where could they find you? Yeah, awesome. My Facebook is Diana Nita. My Instagram is Super Die 3.0. <laughs> and 3.0. <laughs> uh, I, I keep up in it every year. It was <laughs> one and then it's two now we're at three. <laughs> that is, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> A better version yeah. of yourself every year, right? That's right. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll make sure to post a link to all that uh, on our podcast here. Again, I thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your journey with us today. I know our audience are inspired just by hearing your story and hearing your journey. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you.